All right, guys, got another video here for you today. We're gonna be checking out the five and a half inch MMP Performance Center nine millimeter from Smith & Wesson. This is the 2.0 version because everything's better the second time around, right? So we'll talk about it a little bit. And arguably, this is pretty close to the apex of the polymer frame striker fire pistol, in my opinion. Uh, I really love this gun, so let's shoot it a little bit. We got a Crimson Trace 1250 on here, CCS 1250 red dot. Uh, this is their rugged eyes, a little bit more professional model. Let's have some fun, shoot this guy here. This is a ported gun. Oh yeah, this is gonna be fun. Yes, sir. Thing is a bullet delivery device. So a couple of differences on the 1.0 and 2.0 Smith & Wesson pistols. I'll just quickly kind of go over them a little bit here. Um, I really enjoy shooting these handguns. And uh, welcome back. This is Eric with Iraq Veteran 8888. I got to put that in there. Sorry, forgot to do that. But we are going to get into this. Um, I love this pistol. I have the 1.0 version. And uh, the first generation one version of this pistol that I got was back when I was still working at Moss and I went to the Smith & Wesson Armors class and I did, they had this, uh, this thing called the On the Hip program. And if you went and you took the Armors class, you could buy any m and pistol in the catalog for like a greatly reduced price. And I bought my first 1.0 uh, Generation 1 uh, m and and uh, I ordered the Performance Center uh, from them on the On the Hip program. And I think I paid, I, I got a really great price for it. I think it was like 300 bucks or something. It was like a greatly reduced uh, price. And uh, I like it quite a bit. A few things on the 2.0 that they changed up a bit. You ever notice on a 1.0 how if you insert a magazine into it and kind of smack it, a lot of times it'll jostle uh, the slide stop loose and the uh, slide will go ahead and ride on home. They actually put sort of a lock on it that uh, makes it where you can't do that. So no matter how hard you hit it, the slide itself won't move under force. Now, that was one thing that came from the law enforcement side, from what I understand. A lot of people were asking about that. Generally, I don't really have an issue with the 1.0 in terms of that feature. I've never known it to really be a major problem, but I guess they figured people under stress might hit the gun a little bit too hard and they didn't want the pistol accidentally closing if the operator didn't want it to close, that sort of thing. Uh, you do have the interchangeable back straps, which is a very handy feature on this. Uh, twist this key right here to the side and pull it out. And it also doubles as a disassembly tool. A lot of people don't know that. So there's your disassembly tool. And you have interchangeable back straps. This one is set up for the medium uh, because that's about the size I like to go with. In fact, I would say sometimes I even like the small depending on what I'm doing. If I'm wearing gloves, I might run the small back strap. Uh, but that allows uh, the operator to set this thing up a little bit more to their exacting uh, type of configuration. You have a uh, rail system on this, which is retained from the early version as well. Okay, there's a slight change in the overall cosmetics. Uh, you see these four cocking serrations are right here. All right, you got full porting across the top, uh, but only the end of the barrel is ported, right? Okay, and you have high night sights on this one, and this one is set up for a slide rider. Obviously, we ran the CTS 1250 on this one, but otherwise, you know, it's still got a melanite type finish, stainless steel, uh, excellent construction. Another thing on these guns is kind of cool too or when you look at the disassembly of these things and you take them apart, there's actually like a dot matrix uh, on the inside of the slide. And that actually tells Smith & Wesson a bunch of information about this gun, when it was made, what line it was on. It can kind of dial in a lot of information about this gun using that dot matrix that you see in the slide. So if you ever take a Smith & Wesson apart, especially a, an M&P, and look for that dot matrix, you'll see what I'm talking about. That's actually there for a reason. So really cool stuff. You know, it is a polymer frame gun. On the trigger, it's got an excellent trigger on it. And I love on this how the trigger breaks nice and clean and when it breaks, it stops. So they put an over travel stop here on the frame. You can see this little tit here. And uh, I'm not gonna tell tales out of school here, okay? But if I may, if you'll allow me, uh, you know, some of the shooting I've done with Jerry Michalik, I've noticed on some of his Gen 1 MMPs, there was a set screw that he put there himself uh, on his M&P frames, and it looked like something he did to his gun and not what Smith & Wesson did to it. But here we see on the 2.0, it looks like maybe they've taken Jerry's little, uh, you know, 
uh, Louisiana Redneck modification and made it part of the 2.0. So that's kind of cool. I don't recall the 1.0 having that little over travel stop. So that's a nice feature. Um, overall, you know, the features are a little bit better than your standard MMP pistol. Although if you have a Gen 1 MMP, you certainly don't have a bad gun. I mean, they're awesome guns. My Gen 1 MMP is set up with a slide rider as well. So that's not necessarily anything new, but it is a full featured pistol with a five and a half inch barrel, good sight radius, excellent trigger, good velocity, and man, the accuracy is on point. All right, we're gonna run a little bit of ammunition through this. This is some 124 grain Bellom. Bellom is kind of what we've got available right now. We're gonna go ahead and do some shooting here, have a little bit of fun. This is Serbian ammunition, I believe, and it shoots quite well. All right, let's have some fun. Oh yes, I'm in my element. I love this gun, heck yes. That's good on the ammo, John. That's enough here. Yes, sir. <laughs> Woo, son. Dude, this gun is, ah, uh, yes, sir. I mean, come on, boys and girls. Woo, baby. I was so happy when I knew we were making this video today because I was just, I was wanting to get behind a gun that I'm familiar with and that I love. And that's one thing instantly. I picked this pistol up and I know I can shoot it well because I'm used to my 1.0. So it translates perfectly. You know, if you're used to the first generation MPs, you're not going to have a, a problem getting behind a 2.0 at all. Our uh, soda has uh, sprung a leak over there. I think we uh, should help them out a little bit here. All right. <laughs> it never gets old, no matter how many times I do it, man. Look, we got a target over here that doesn't have any shots on it. So since uh, yeah, I had to name drop Jerry Mitchellick, so you know, I noticed that Jerry's been doing all these crazy trick shots in his videos and stuff, and you know, he's the trick shot king. So I'll tell you what, I'm gonna try an upside down shot, just because, hey, we, we got this, the spirit of Jerry is here, right? So we have, to, we have to honor Jerry a little bit. And I'm gonna see if I can put a round on that D28, that's a four inch target, I'm gonna put it on the cranium, using the red dot, upside down. Just low. Let me try again. Ah. All right. How about an upside down shot at 80 yards? Ah, come on, girl. Yes, sir. Ah, the gun gods are smiling. Maybe, maybe. Okay. I have to... I have to pull Jerry's chain a little bit here in a few of the videos just for fun. Wow, what a pistol, man. Heck yes. All 
right, so quick note on these magazines. Uh, these are standard 17-shot magazine bodies, but these are the Turan Tactical. Uh, Turan Butler makes these magazine uh, extensions. I'm a redneck, y'all. I'm not good at math. What is that, 21 shots, I think, as we've got in these magazines? All right. <laughs> Woo, buddy. All right. <laughs> Get some. <laughs> Woo! Yes, sir. Good day. I like those uh, Turin tactical extensions too because. On an empty magazine, you got that little bit of extra weight, so that really helps the mag get out of there with a, with a good bit more uh, gravitational assistance, if you will. <laughs> okay, last mag. I think you guys get the idea. I'm trying to shoot fast because I'm trying to give you guys an idea. Like in a three-gun competition, you got to shoot those fast splits, right? You know, you got to transition fast. And I'm not a professional shooter by any stretch of the means. I'm not, you know... A professional three-gun shooter but uh i certainly do love these types of pistols because they just they perform so well they're so accurate and you know if you were going to carry a full-size handgun for personal defense um <laughs> i'm gonna tell you right now man this this would be one the king of carry guns if you if you wanted to have something in that vein um it will certainly uh protect you as you can quite clearly see i'm capable of uh taking care of business with this thing. I'm, I'm very happy with this pistol. Yes, sir. All right. All right. <laughs> All right, that's been the 2.0 Performance Center M&P. That's a five and a half inch ported barrel. Yes, sir. I'm a happy boy today. That is a, that's quite the shooting experience. Uh, always a great day to get one of these out. And of course, ran flawlessly. Uh, I would expect nothing less out of these guns. Um, they have a very proven track record and I've been very happy with mine. So uh, we hope you enjoyed today's video. A little bit of silliness here and you know, have to have a little bit of fun, but I really appreciate y'all watching. And I wanna take a moment to thank all of our Patreon supporters. Those of you who purchased man cans, Go over on Ballistic Inc., pick yourself up a snazzy t-shirt. All of the funds that we earn off of that stuff goes right back to supporting our channel, putting together videos like this. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. Many more on the way. Yes, sir. That's the, that's the king of polymer pistols right there, in my opinion, right now. That, that's, the, that's the bee's knees. This and the Glock 17L are very high on my list. Have a great day.